Hi guys, my name's Tudor. I'm the Man of the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about leadership again, something I've not actually talked about in a fair while, even though it's something that I discuss with people an awful lot day to day. Um, and one of the things that, that I wanted to touch on was kind of because I was also um, kind of last week talking about um, interviews and, and uh, interview questions and how to fail properly and how to move into a new environment, take take kind of advantage of new opportunities. Um, there are also a lot of people who are maybe moving on from university um, over the next few months. And uh, whilst it was fresh in my head, I just wanted to talk about um, things that you shouldn't do when moving into a new, um, especially leadership position, but position generally. Um, and that, that's just because in the time that I was working corporate, in the time that I was um, in an office, in a store, whatever, um, it was a case of there would be an awful lot of university graduates that come in. I've talked about the millennial problem before that's addressed by Simon Sinek in various videos of his. Um, but the thing that's always stood out to me is that there are there are a lot of um, areas of expertise that have progressed through things like university, through college, school, whatever. But then coming out the other side and going into the world of work, it's again a completely different environment. And some of the things that you've been able to do in university to get ahead or the the worked well in school to make yourself stand out, um, they don't necessarily apply particularly well to a work environment, especially if you're working as part of a team or especially very much more so if you are uh, coming in as a leadership, uh, in a, a kind of a leadership role. And it's, it's a case of going, um, I've seen so many uh, university graduates coming into a place where I've been working and um, because of their qualifications to one extent or another, either because on paper they've got transferable skills, on paper they've got expertise, um, they're able to come in and get in access to greater opportunities and leadership positions before other people who have potentially been there longer but have maybe struggled more. Um, and so it's it's then though a case of seeing an awful lot of those uh, university graduates that come into those working environments then struggle, kind of bash their head against the wall time and time again um, due to the, the way that they just put themselves across in many instances. Um, a lot of the time it doesn't necessarily come down to skills it doesn't come down to the other things that, that are going on even people that are moving jobs within the same company um, it's it's one of these are all things that you guys shouldn't be doing now the first one and I like to think this one is painfully obvious but the first one that I, I want to just touch in on is uh, that that change is a thing that happens don't resist it like when you are moving into a new environment obviously certain things are going to change for you but you moving into that environment at all is going to cause a shift in whatever was going on beforehand, whatever is going on afterwards, even if you're used to being within the same uh, company, you moving into that new place, that new environment, that new role, everything's going to change in various ways for you and the people around you. Don't try and resist it. Don't try and um, kind of lock yourself away from it um, the best thing to do in my opinion especially if it's if it's a change that has to happen as a result of information being passed down to you if it comes from your boss or if it comes from a, another senior member someone that's training you in the position that you're in the thing to do is have them explain it to you ask for the why make sure that you understand the ins and outs of it uh, there was one initiative that got brought in when I was working with a team of about 30 people and I was one of the people um, there was me and one other guy at the top of the team with our manager above us and it came down to we too were responsible for cascading the information down now the other guy um, was disliked by the team generally and as a result they weren't particularly receptive to him regardless um, so when it came to cascading it, he was very much sidelined and it was my job to do it. Now, I didn't like the idea of this change to begin with and I voiced my concerns and my irritation with it time and time again. 
the reason why I voiced those concerns, I didn't voice them to the team, I voiced them to my manager, and through voicing them to my manager and asking questions and asking for justifications, I got that extra information that was, I then meant I was more happy with it, which then meant I could cascade it to the rest of the team, help people out, get people working on it and everything like that. So when change happens, it's better to know all of the ins and outs of it, all of the things that are expected from it so that you can apply it, get it working. Because again, if it, if you are there as part of a uh, kind of um, experiment, then you need to go and, and try it out, see what's working and then come back. If it's genuinely just making everything go to hell, then obviously that's another time to speak up. But again, it's to speak up to the person that's put you in that position. So when it comes to change, be it the change in the environment that you have gone through as a result of joining a new job, going to a new school, um, involving yourself with, with anything new within that environment, be it changing job roles, be it whatever else, change is going to happen and we tend to, to back away from it just because we're afraid of losing what we already have. Simply put, if you're in a job, if you're relatively secure in that kind of way, um, then ask for that extra information and run with it you know there's, there's no reason to back away from it if you're not stable i.e you're on your probationary period or this is still very new to you your first time doing this job whatever then the next thing to do would be just accept and move forward even if it's difficult and as long as it's not illegal as long as it's not infringing on your rights as an individual or anything like that if it's just some weird policies that are maybe too specific uh, paperwork that needs to be filled out in kind of triplicate or whatever uh, for absolutely no reason then you know it might not make sense to you or whatever else but it's the way that you're going to have to change your operating method just to to ensure that security after that point then maybe you can provide some more feedback you can ask some more questions you can have more of a discussion around it but whilst I'm not a big fan of just jumping through hoops myself anyway Sometimes it's it's what needs to uh, to transpire. The next thing, and again, I, I'd like to think that this is is kind of glaringly obvious, but don't be unprofessional. You know, don't turn up to work, um, or turn up to your new position, or turn up to to your new uni or whatever else um, in an unpresentable state. Um, don't turn up and act like some kind of spoiled child making demands um, or suggest that you know best when you're only just starting there. You know, there are lots of um, crappy bosses that I've had that as a result of them thinking they know best, um, they have decided to act out and in incredibly unprofessional ways with the way that they have spoken to people, with the way that they have conducted themselves. And some of those bosses do fine. They, they manage to pass under the radar for long enough, but every single one of them, has, to my knowledge, has run into a brick wall of some description, be it now they're stuck in that job and they're never moving again because they can't be fired for what they're doing, but they, they're definitely not going to be promoted any further, um, whether it's a case of they have been sacked, whether it's a case of they thought that because they knew so well they could leave and then come back um, once they realised that the, everything was falling to, to pieces around them uh, and then they got refused uh, the, the vacancy when they had left, they had made the vacancy in the first place. You know, it, it doesn't work out. So simply put, you know, I've, I've done other videos on professionalism um, the, that you can find. I'll, I'll leave, um, as long as I remember, I'll leave them down in the... A link to them down in the uh, the description there but again professionalism is one of these things where you present yourself to that environment even if you're going to uni conduct yourself in a manner that's that's professional as per the uni um, at one point when I was working at a university some of the the individuals that were going there paying huge amounts of money extortionate amounts of money to be there for courses that were probably not all that valuable um, it's it's a case of they were turning up and it was just high school plus it was it was just um, 
now that mummy and daddy aren't here, I can go and play and I can try and do whatever I want and get away with everything, treat other people like crap, act like a spoiled child. And in that environment, again, that doesn't endear you to people. It doesn't uh, in any way help you move forward or gain access to further opportunities through that environment. Um, so simply put, don't don't be an arse. Treat everything that you're going into with an element of, of gravity and you know professionalism. Just because you're a, a student doesn't mean you can't be a professional learner. Yeah, conduct yourself in a good manner. Um, and one that demonstrates that you're taking what you're doing seriously. Um, the next one is is don't be arrogant. Like there are an awful lot of, of especially younger managers, but uh, it seems to be younger and uh, very kind of exceptionally old managers who have this issue. Where in the case of the young ones, it's I've been built up above other uh, built up above other people, um, and so as a result, their ego just explodes, and and they are arrogant, they're dismissive. Um, when they are actually questioned, they become very negative, very hostile, and uh, they will never actually recognise the work of other people, compliment others. Um, they will only ever pull more glory and gratification onto themselves. And, you know, obviously this tends to make them dislikable people, uh, but also because they're on the younger side, it then traps them in that place. The other end of it is among the older, older individuals in those kind of environments, older managers, people who have been in a slew of, of management jobs who have then come into another one and, and decided to try and take over the team and run it the way they've always run it because they're amazing so why wouldn't they um, you know that that's a case of seeming habit and it seems to have got them to a certain point um, but obviously coming into a new environment especially if that environment involves a lot of younger people then it's something that they're not going to get on well with same with just moving into uh, other new environments being arrogant just doesn't make you any friends uh, it doesn't make you easy to work with um, and suffice it to say that that's, that's something that you need be it in a university environment be it in a school environment be it in a workplace uh, volunteering, whatever you need those people around you to at least be able to communicate with you to, to function around you and for you to function around them and you being arrogant, you allowing your ego to swell, your head to become so large that you find it difficult walking through standard sized doorways, um, it, it becomes um, an obstacle of your own creation and that, that does you no favours at all. Um, the next one is is don't undermine the people around you. You know, there, there are going to be people of varying levels of confidence uh, of competence, of understanding, um, who are all are going to be all around you regardless of where you go. Um, and, you know, there's, there's usually a, a line between telling someone off um, in, in a very direct manner or, uh, and, and correcting them or just straight up pulling the carpet out from under them. And you know, one of the things that gets brought up a lot in those kind of situations as part of a uh, part of management training is things like the praise sandwich, where you say a positive, then drop in all the negative stuff, then a, another positive to end it off. So you've got that kind of rounded off situation. Sometimes that feels very forced, um, and it takes practice to try and deliver that in a comfortable manner. But for the most part, it's very rare that you need to straight up discipline someone. And so the reprimands and corrections tend to be quite small, and it's much it's much better if you go into that thinking about how you can help them learn for next time, rather than just they've done it wrong and I need to kick them for it. And you know, especially when it's it's in a your team versus the public kind of environment. So probably not so much universities and things, but especially in, in jobs where you're dealing with customers. Um, 
there, there should very much be a case of, and I'm not saying every time, because obviously sometimes your staff will get it wrong, but if your staff has said, if your member of staff that you're working with has said something, don't just straight up say that they're basically lying to a customer or anything like that. Um, in the couple of situations that I, that I can think of, when I was in a situation like that, I had an employee that maybe hadn't told the customer exactly the right information. Simply put, it, it's not too hard to take that person to that that customer to one side, correct the information, deal with them adequately, glaze over and just just ignore what was said before, and then come back to that um, that member of your team or that colleague and just have a word quietly with them, just pointing out that actually what they said wasn't accurate and it needs to be this instead. You know, they're much more, they're, they're, people will be much more appreciative of you coming in and looking out for their well-being, both in terms of dealing with the situation rather than, you know, as, a, as an aside, rather than just trying to sweep the carpet out from under them and make them look bad, um, but also just as a, a case of then coming back to them and, you know, correcting them quietly just between the two of you not having to humiliate them not having to do anything else just something between the two of you to establish greater learning greater understanding it's a much better way of doing things than just going and shouting at someone uh, unless it's it's an extreme situation or better than humiliating them in front of other people because when we feel humiliated we clam up right we all we shut down we hide we can't try and defend ourselves and so then if you've done that, then that employee, that colleague, that fellow student, that whatever, whoever they are, they are likely to be uh, far less receptive to anything else that you are going to say. Um, and the last one, this fifth point here, is focus on the positive. Like Even if you're feeling miserable, that those are those emotions aren't things that should come with you that's part of professionalism but also it's a case of you know temper your negative emotions into something more positive um use your positive emotions to enthuse about what you're doing who you're doing it with and all that kind of thing you know we are human this is uh, emotions are some of the hardest things to to deal with but if you're feeling miserable if you're feeling upset then try and rework it in your head try and reframe it again done videos on reframing in the past for you guys to take a look at but try and just work it around the other way so that you can go right well I'm feeling miserable but as a result of being at work it gives me a distraction so I'm going to throw myself into it and that's going to be my positive draw the fact that I don't have to deal with what's making me feel miserable to begin with I, I just need to focus on on what's important right now um or spinning things around so that it's a case of going, well, yeah, fine, the customers the customers suck, they're miserable. Um, but that's why we've got each other and we can work together as a team just to get through the day. We can have some fun whilst we do it. You know, it, it creates, you can create anything, um, something positive out of anything that's negative. You know, it takes, it might take a little bit of a stretch, but there's always something that, that can come out of it. Every cloud's got a silver lining, right? And then if you've, if you've got those positive emotions, then yeah, sure, throw them out there. Let people see that you're excited about things, happy about things, that you're eager to get on with work. Now, obviously, sometimes there are negative emotions that need to be displayed. You know, if you are being uh, poorly treated, having a display of those emotions to your boss as a result of, of um, the, the kind of whole thing bubbling over and you essentially being in a bad situation in a hostile work environment yeah that's probably a place to demonstrate how affected you have been um but i'm not talking about extremes here i'm talking about your day-to-day -day in this new role that you've just gone into wherever it may be keep your your negative emotions in check and just reframe them a little bit when they turn up keep your positive emotions on display for everybody to see and for them to join in on as well you know if you're eager if you're happy if you're at least able to show off some energy even if you're um, amused and entertained in a very nihilistic way then it's still something that others can potentially uh, relate to get involved with get picked up and swept along by and it can just potentially lead to your days being much easier as well as other people's days being much easier and it will work out much nicer 
um, but also the more of a positive force that you are on your team, the more likely you are to get noticed as a positive force on your team for further advancement, for additional projects, for whatever else. But anyway, guys, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about uh, anything else that you would add to this list, you know, other things that you personally uh, have as a thing that you do when entering into a new environment, a new job, a new school, whatever. Because um, obviously I don't have all the answers and some of these aren't, you know, a lot of these things that I've just thrown out there worked for me, worked for other clients that I've dealt with, people I've coached, other people that I've worked with. But there are lots of types of people out there and no matter how much we boil them down, um, there are still going to be things that are completely different for for others than uh, the way that I would deal with something or the way that I've seen people deal with it or how this has all worked. People in other cultures have different situations in work, for instance, and so the coping mechanisms may be different. I'd love to hear your stories. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what else we could add to this list. But anyway, guys, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful or interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.